to give gratitude, they taught you to do certain rituals. So similarly, the councillors of this universe, all the councillors of this universe, 33 million devils and devtas, Surya, Indra, Varuna, Vayu, these are cosmic administrators. They give you light. They give you wind. Sebastian, turn around, stand there. You know your position. They give you air. All that nourishment. You got Chandra, the moon. The first part of the Vedas, in the Samhita and in the Brahmanas, you are taught to ritually perform worship to these devils and devtas, to show them gratitude for giving you these entities on a daily basis. the direction is shifted and it is changed from ritualism into spiritualism. Now that you know who your administrators are, then you need to know who you and in order to know who you are, the Upanishads were created. The Upanishads were written to show who you are, to show what this material nature is about, and to show you who the Supreme Personality of Godhead is. Similarly, in your country, you will know your duties as a citizen. You will pay your light bill, your water bill to your municipalities and you will pay your national taxes so the government can run. Then you will inquire who is the state president and what is the duty of the state president. It would be worthless fumbling around no, to know the state president because these essentials that you need in life is initially provided by the councillors. So you need to have a relationship with your councillors first and in gratitude, you have to pay your bills. You have to pay your bills. Similarly, in the Samhitas and in the Brahmanas, you do your rituals. However, if you only do your rituals, and at the end of your lifetime, pass on, then this human body was wasted. And I want you to listen very carefully to me. If you only do your rituals, as per the Samhitas and the Brahmana, and you do not inquire in your purpose in this life, then this material body was wasted and as per your merits, you will come back in this life or you will go lower or you will go higher. However, the purpose of this body would not be fulfilled. So the Supreme Personality of Godhead in his absolute perfection created the Vedas. There is no contradiction in the Vedas. 
There is absolutely no contradiction in the Vedas. It is very, very simple. You start off, you have zillions of lifetimes. You start off with the rituals. When you know what the ritual is about, then you make an inquiry into yourself. And when you make an inquiry into yourself, then you will have to know who your creator is. And when you want to find out who your creator is, then you have to know what this creation is about and what is the constitutional position of you as the creator, what is the position of this creation and what is the position of the creator of both you, the created individual and the created universes. So there is no contradiction. It is your journey in different phases of your life. You move in now with your knowledge. What is the function of a counselor? What is the function of a chief minister? And what is the function of a prime minister or state president? It's very, very simple. Is there any con is there any contradiction? Is there any contradiction? There is a absolute system that is created by the Supreme Personality of God. But what have our Hindus done both here yeah, locally and internationally? And unfortunately in India as well. What have the Hindus done? They took the councillors and they said, you are the state president. What they did? They took the cosmic administrators, the councillors, and they said, Lord, you are the state president. They got stuck in the ritual. They forgot the significance of the ritual. They got stuck in the ritual and they forgot the significance of that ritual. The significance of any ritual is to become spiritual as per Vedic injunction. That is the process. First, you perform a ritual, and in performing that ritual, the aim and objective of that particular ritual is to become spiritual. So in pursuance, in pursuance with this fundamental knowledge that I have given you now, we want to know who the president is. So I said that the information called the Vedas is the very breath of the Supreme Personality of God. And we can find him in three ways as agreed by all the saints and sages of all time. All the saints and sages of all times have agreed that if you want to know who the Supreme Personality of Godhead really is and who the real Supreme Personality of Godhead is, you must go to the literature that was breathed out by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Remember, the Veda was only written 5,000 years ago. It was written. The Veda was passed on since time immemorial through hearing, through the sound energy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The best you can ever see. Through the sound medium so let's see the agreement was that if you want to find out who the supreme personality of Godhead is there are three sets of literature three sets of literature one 
is the Upanishads, which is the last portion of the four Vedas. One is the Upanishads, which is the last portion of the four Vedas, of which there are 108. Number two, the Bhagavad Gita. Number two, the Bhagavad Gita. And number three, the Vedanta Sutras. The Vedanta Sutras. So you must use these three sets of knowledge and you will deduce who the Supreme Personality of Godhead is. Only these three sets of knowledge. So I'm going to start our work reading you three verses from the Upanishads. And remember, there is absolutely no contradiction in the Vedas. The Vedas cannot be contradicted by itself because it has one author. One author authored all of the Vedic injunctions beside the Ramayana, which was authored by Valmiki. However, all of the verses in the Ramayana is absolute pure Vedas. Not one verse in the Ramayana is outside the injunctions of the Vedas. So there is only one author that's outside and when he authored the Ramayana, he authored it within the parameters of the Vedas. No one else is allowed to author or manufacture any other scripture. Otherwise, Sanatana Karma will crash or will be in chaos. Remember, Sanatana Karma is not a sectarian religion in a book. Sanatana Dharma is a living organism. Sanatana Dharma lives whether you believe in it or whether you do not believe in it. Whether we instill this knowledge in our children, whether I give you this knowledge, whether I have satsang every week or whether I stop satsang. Sanatana Dharma continues to exist. It does not need a human being to propel it into its reality because no human created Sanatana Dharma. Sanatana Dharma was created by the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Lord Narayana. And it will continue to exist whether people believe or do not believe, whether they manufacture other scriptures, or they do not manufacture other scriptures. Lord Narayan does not care. He is absolute. He is, he is absolute. We live in his body. This material universe is a manifestation of the body of God Shiva Narayan. And we are living in his body. He does not care. So I'm going to read to you from an authorized scripture. This is what a bona fide guru must do. He must give you a discourse and then he must explain his discourse through his own realizations and supplement it with the actual truth. So I'm giving you now three verses Shri Narayana Upanishad Chapter 1 Narayana is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He is 
desired, I shall create children. From Narayana, the life breath, mind, all the senses, ether, air, fire, water, and earth, which maintains the universe were born. From Narayana, Brahma was born. From Narayana, Shiva was born. From Narayana, Indra was born. From Narayana, Prajapati was born. From Narayana, the twelve Adityas were born. The Rudras, the Vasus, and all the Vedic kings were born. I want you to hear me clearly. From, from Narayana, all the Vedic hymns were born. Do you understand what I'm saying? This is a Vedic injunction. No human, no saint, no guru, no sage can change this because this hymn was written from whom? This hymn came from where? Lord Narayan. From Narayana, they were manifested. Into Narayana, they again entered. This is the crown of the Rig Veda. What does crown mean? Sorry? The highest point of the Rig Veda, which is over 10,000 verses, This verse that states Lord Narayan is everything and everything is Lord Narayan is the crown of the Rig Veda means that there is no higher truth in the Rig Veda itself of all its 10,000 verses than this truth that Lord Srimad Narayan is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Chapter 2 Narayana is eternal. Narayana is Brahma. Narayana is the universe. Narayana is Indra. Narayana is time. Narayana is the primary direction. Narayana is the secondary direction. Narayana is above. Narayana is below. Narayana is within. And Narayana is without. Narayana is everything. Whatever was and whatever will be. Narayana is the supreme personality of Godhead. One without a second. I want you to underline this in your mind and underline it in red. Narayana is one without a second. This is a Vedic injunction. There cannot be two Supreme Personalities of Godhead. There cannot be two Supreme Personalities of Godhead. Because what does Supreme mean? What is the meaning of Supreme? Narayana is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, one without a second, free of all impurity, untouched by matter, liberated, pure, beyond the power of material words to the sky. One who understands him in this way becomes like Lord Vishnu. He becomes like Lord Vishnu. This is the crown of the Yajur Veda. This is the crown 
of the Yajur Veda. The first verse was the crown of the Rig Veda. This verse is the crown of the Yajur Veda. That means the entire Yajur Veda is encapsulated in this verse. There can be nothing higher in the Yajur Veda than this verse. Chapter 3. First one pronounces the letter Om. Then one pronounces the letter Namaha. Then one pronounces the word Narayana. Om has one syllable. Namaha has two. Sorry, Namaha. Nama has two syllables. Narayana has five syllables. This is the eighth syllable mantra of Lord Narayana. One who respectfully recites this eight syllable mantra of Lord Narayana attains long life. He has good children, royal opulence and a wealth of many cows. He becomes immortal. This is the crown of the son of the This is the crown of the son of the So these three Vedas, the Atapa Veda is, is the fourth Veda which includes these Verses that's in the three Vedas. So the crown of the first three Vedas, Rig Ved, Yajur Ved, and the Sama Veda, right at the very outset. at the very outset takes and casts in stone that Lord Narayan is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. First Veda, Second Veda, Third Veda. There is no contradictions. No other names of other gods are found in these four Vedas. In these four Vedas, no other names of other gods are found in these four Vedas. No saint, no sage, not even Lord Brahma has the capacity to change one verse, one comma, one full stop in the Vedas itself. Lord Narayan incarnates at the end of every Dwapara Yuga to collate all the Vedic knowledge that is generally in the three Yugas transmitted orally into writing. Only who he appoints, and this is Srila Veda Vyas, he appoints his disciples to write the various Vedas under his guidance. There is no other author to the Vedas and there can be no contradiction to what one author has written. There can be absolutely no contradiction to this one author has written. So I'm going to use the Srimad Bhagavatam to further reinstate my position. But I want to state 
at the very outset that after Lord Veda Vyas, the only other saint that collated and synthesized the entire Vedas over a period of 60 years in the Sri Rangam temple that is still existing today 1000 years ago was Lord Sri Ramanuj. Lord Sri Ramanuj did not hallucinate and go into a dream and dream another system. Lord Sri Ramanuj went into every philosophy. He studied every philosophy. There are six philosophies in Sanatana Dharma. He studied all six philosophies. He entered into the consciousness of all six philosophies over a period of 60 years. And when he was fully satisfied, he wrote the Sri Bhasya. And the Sri Bhasya is the most comprehensive exposition of the Vedic injunction that was ever written in Kalu. No other saint has matched his comprehensive exposition of all of the Vedic injunctions. He explained every contradiction that's in the Vedas to show that they are either supplementary or neutral but not contradictory. And his conclusion is exactly Veda Vyasa's conclusion. After Veda Vyas wrote all of the Vedas, he made a statement in the Mahabharata. He made a statement in the Mahabharata of which he himself is the author and he also lived in the Mahabharata period, did he not? Did he not? Who is this? The author. Who will know who the Supreme Personality of Godhead is? if it is done in writing. The author, the author will be the first person to know who the Supreme Personality of Godhead is. Is it logic? Is it logic? that the author must know who the highest form of God is, the man who authored all the Vedas, only he can declare who the Supreme Personality of God is. Not one saint or a group of saints. The author, the this is, go and read in the Mahabharata. This is what Veda Vyas states in the Mahabharata. He said, after scrutinizing the four Vedas, the 18 Puranas, and the 108 Upanishads, time and time and time and time again, I, 
Srila Vedavyas has come to the conclusion that the Supreme Personality of Godhead is Lord Srimanna. Is any saint born to change the injunction and conclusion of Vedasyas? Can a saint be greater than Vedasyas? Because Vedasyas himself is an incarnation of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Okay. And after him, 1,000 years ago, scrutinizing all the Vedic injunctions from end to end over a period of 60 years, Lord Sri Ramanuj also arrived at the same conclusion that Lord Narayan is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Lord Narayan is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So in one of the 18 Puranas called the Padma Puran, it is stated that there are only four authorized Sampradayas in Sanatana Dharma. The Sri Sampradaya, which I belong to, the Sri Ramanu Sampradaya, which I belong to, and my initiated devotees, the Brahma Sampradaya, which is also called the Gaudiya Sampradaya. The Brahma Sampradaya is also called the Gogya Sampradaya. The Kumaras Sampradaya, which are the four Sanat Kumaras, the four mind-born sons of Lord Brahma. And the Rudra Sampradaya, which is headed by Lord Shiva. So the Sri Sampradaya is headed by Mother Lakshmi. The Brahma Sampradaya is headed by Lord Brahma himself. The Sanata, the Kumara Sampradaya is headed by the four brothers. And the Rudra Sampradaya is headed by Lord Shiva. And in this Padma Puran, it is stated that Lord Narayan is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, all four Sampradayas. The Sri Sampradaya, the Gaudiya Sampradaya, the original Gaudiya Sampradaya from the Vedas, from the Vedas, Lord Narayan is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The Kumara Sampradaya from the Veda or Veda Vyas is Lord Narayan is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And the Rudra Sampradaya is Lord Narayan is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The Advaitic Injunctions. These are Vedic injunctions and the Vedic injunctions must be absolute. It can't say no one day you are God, okay, next day you are God. No. Absolute means God is God. And God or Lord is Lord indicated by Himself, who is a created being to say who is Lord. We are fighting among different religions. We are fighting here in Sanatana Dharma itself. And by me giving this discourse, there is going to be fight around the world. Who are we to fight? I am only telling you what God said. 
I'm giving you verdict injunction spoken by God himself. That's all I'm doing. I am like this mic. This mic is only telling you what I said. This mic is not telling you anything that I did not say. Natasha, is this mic telling you anything that I did not say? It's only telling you what I said. Similarly, I am the mic for Lord Narayan. I am only telling you what Lord Narayan is speaking. All of you understand. So these are very injunctions. And today, whilst I'm giving this discourse, Anyone from around the world can punch in Narayan Upanishad, can punch in Veda Vyas, can punch in Padma Purana, can punch in four Sampradayas. You just have to write matching words. And the supercomputer will tell you exactly what Acharya Ji has said. Because this is in an age of Social media, do you know what social media means? Same like media we had. First we had print media. Then we had television. Now we have social media where I can talk to the world from here now which I am doing. And anyone can verify what I have said because the information is there on the internet. Maybe not fully, but you will find out that whatever I said today is there in the Vedas. I have not made, I'm not so big to make my own system. I have to follow my guru. And my guru stated, Lord Narayan is the supreme personality of God. And I am stating through my guru, Lord Narayan is the supreme personality of Godhead. All of you understand. So I'm going to do a few verses. So I want to say at the outset that when Lord Sri Ramanuj, when he synthesized all the Vedic injunctions, he never used the Srimad Bhagavatam anyway. He never used the Srimad Bhagavatam anywhere, neither did he quote from the Srimad Bhagavatam. But I'm taking the liberty on my own to quote from the Srimad Bhagavatam. I'm doing this on my own. All of Sri Ramanu's work, there is not one quotation from the Sri Ramanu. And according to Sri Prabhupada, the Sri Bhagavatam is a natural commentary on the Vedanta Sutras. According to Sri Prabhupada, the Sri Bhagavatam is a natural commentary of the Vedanta Sutras. Okay? So he commented on nine cantos of the Srimad Bhagavatam himself. And from the tenth canto until the twelfth canto, his disciples used his lectures and they brought in a commentary. So the very first commentary, or the first verse I'm going to read, is from Canto, from the fourth Canto, part one. From the fourth Canto, part one. So this Srimad Bhagavatam was translated from Sanskrit into English by Srila Prabhupada and it has been sourced around the world through the Bhakti Vidyanta book.
good quality. Okay. Silver Bhagavatam Canto 4, Chapter 1.
was not translated by Swami Prabhupada. It was translated by his disciples. He had left the universe by then. He last translated the up to the ninth canto. Okay. So his disciples have translated and I'm reading text one. Sri Parikshit said, O Brahmana, how can the Vedas directly describe the Supreme Absolute Truth, who cannot be described in words? The Vedas are limited to describing the qualities of material nature, but the Supreme is devoid of these qualities being transcendental to all manifestations and their causes. All right. As per this question, As per this question, Sri Sanandana replied, After the Supreme Lord withdrew the universe he had previously created, he lay for some time as if asleep, and all his energies rested dormant within him. When the time came for the next creation, the personified Vedas awakened him by chanting his glories, just as folks serving a king approach him at dawn and awaken him by reciting his heroic deeds. Okay, and I'm giving you now, I stated earlier on that the Vedas is the very breath of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Now this breath personified Personified means this breath has taken a person, it has become a person. And now this breath, which is all knowledge of the Vedas, is now talking as a person. And this is what the personified Vedas are saying. Okay? Now, I'm going to give you the commentary on this verse by the disciples of Srila Prabhupada. At the time of creation, the Vedas are the first emanation from the breathing of Lord Mahavishnu. And in personified form, they serve him by waking him from his mystic sleep. Okay? This statement made by Sanatana implies that Sanaka and the other sages had asked him the same question that Narayana had asked Narayana Rishi and Maharaj Pariksit had asked Sukadeva Goswami. Sanatana refers the question back to the example of the personified Veda themselves in their address to Lord Mahavishnu. Even though the Vedas knew that the Lord, being omniscient, does not need to be informed of his glories. They enthusiastically took this opportunity to praise him. Okay? So once again, there's a confirmation that the Creator is. There is no difference between Vishnu and Narayan. And once again, we get an affirmation Then, he goes on in his commentary and he quotes the Rig Veda 1.154.1 and this is his quotation, only he may fully enunciate
enunciate the heroic deeds of Lord Vishnu who can count all the particles of dust in the world. Only he can fully enunciate the heroic deeds of Lord Vishnu who can count all the particles of dust in the world. He is the omnipresent Lord and Controller. Only those wise souls who worship him obtain eternal happiness, not anyone else. So this is a disciple of Swami Prabhupada and his quotation from the Rig Veda cements in stone that Lord Narayan is the Supreme Personality of Godhead and in his commentary, this is his quotation, he says again, He is the one omnipresent Lord and Controller. Only those wise souls who worship Him obtain eternal happiness, not anyone else. What does that mean? Not anyone else. You can only worship Lord Narayan. He takes a quotation from the Yadu Veda and he writes it in his commentary. And I read it well. Verbatim means word for word. I am not making my own story here. As a bona fide spiritual master, my duty is to only present as it has been presented. I am not making an opinion. You can make your own opinion. I am giving you the facts as it is. Alright? So if you got jaundice and if I give you sweets, how will it taste? How? I'm just giving sweet. If you got jaundice, it will taste. And if you got no jaundice, it will taste. I'm just giving the sweet. My job is just to give the sweet to everyone. Alright? And I got one more verse. Because we are hungry. I got my whole life. Part of the commentary given by this 
Sai pelo alto, tome para o lado. He says, in the opinion of Srila Jiva Goswami. In the opinion of Srila Jiva Goswami. Who was Srila Jiva Goswami? Veneta? The six Goswamis in Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's In the opinion of one of the six Goswamis in Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's time, this is what the disciple is saying. The word Adi Mana in the passage quoted above refers to the ruler of the aggregate mind of the universe, Lord Aniruddha, who appears as a plenary expansion of Sri Narayana when the latter desires to create. Who desires to create? Lord Narayana. And who is the aggregate mind of the universe? Lord Aniruddha. Alright? Prajapati is Brahma, the father of all created beings. And then Srila Jiva Goswami goes further and he gives a coach. Who's giving this coach? Srila Goswami, who appeared with Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu 500 years ago. In his own writings, this is what he wrote in his books. They have a name, I'm just forgetting it now. And this is from the writings of Srila Goswami. And this is what he says. He says, this is described in the Maha Narayana Upanishad. One point four. And then the quotation. Then Lord Narayana meditated upon another desire of this. And as he pondered, a drop of perspiration fell from his forehead. All material creations evolved from the fermentation of this drop. Therein the fiery golden egg of the universe appeared, and within that globe, four headed Brahma took his birth. So, who has confirmed Lord Narayan as the supreme personality of Godhead and creator? And if you read carefully, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself stated that Lord Narayan is the Supreme Personality of God. Go and research. Make this exciting. Don't fight with the Guru. Don't hate the Guru because you do not know. Excite yourself and excite the Guru because this is what God wants. This is why God plays. All oh, this is God's lila. Different gurus come from different times and they do different things. Then other gurus come and do other things. And then we come and we put it all together. So go and do some research. Right? A very drunk man. If you keep switching his drink and give him water, what do you think he, he thinks he's drinking? Yes. Then he pours another one, then you switch it again, and then he takes it. As long as in his mind he thinks he is drinking, and he's getting more drunk, and his speech is getting more slurred, and he's wobbling. 
Alright? Then when you tell him that you poured the drink in the sink and you are drinking water, you get very, very nice. Alright? So those of you here, yeah, nationally, internationally, if you had some other information as to who the Supreme Personality of God is, like that drunk man you might get, upset. But calm down. Give up drinking. If you give up drinking, nobody can love you. Similarly, the scriptures are there to be read. What I'm reading today, anyone in any part of the world can read. This Srimad Bhagavatam is even on, 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 on the internet. Anyone can read it on the internet. Go and read this Srimad Bhagavatam from cover to cover. All I did is I read and I'm telling you. I did not write it. Okay? That's all I'm doing. So don't be drunk. Soba. And if you sober, your wife can never switch your water. You'll just be having pure water. Alright? Which is the absolute 